In this video, we're going to work through a simple valuation exercise, and we're going to solve for the value of a company uh, using a variation of the dividend discount model uh, in Excel. So everything we're going to do here is in Excel. So in the example you can see below, it, we have a series of explicit cash flows uh, for the first five years. Then we have a period of high growth with a growth rate of 6%. Then we have a period of mature growth once the company switches into its mature phase. And at that rate, or that growth rate of dividends is 2%. So we're going to figure out what the value of this stream of cash flows is, or the stream of dividends. Um, I've taken the liberty to uh, draw the cash flow timeline uh, before this video started. So with our timeline, we've got a series of explicit cash flows, um, 5, 5, 9, 7, and 10. Then we make the assumption that the, company, the company's dividend is going to grow at a high growth rate of 6% for the next five years, so years 6 through 10. And then starting at year 11, the dividend is going to grow at a constant 2% forever. So the way I like to set these problems up in Excel um, is, very, is very generic, it's very general. And so the first thing I like to do is set up a time column. And this is going to act as the translation of that cash flow diagram. So I set up, I start with the one, go one plus the cell above it, and I'm gonna go through 10 uh, right now, just uh, I'll explain why here in a second. The next thing we uh, almost always need to do is have a discount rate because we are going to be discounting these cash flows back to today. The way I like to do it is I like to set up a discount factor. So we're going to have a discount factor column in which we're going to discount those cash flows back simply by multiplying the cash flows by this discount factor. But before we actually calculate the discount factor, we need to figure out exactly what the discount or the appropriate discount rate will be. So to start off with uh, to figuring that out, I like to put together my assumptions that I'm making forth in this, this problem. So I create a little section called assumptions. And based on the problem, the high growth rate is 6%. The mature growth rate is 2%. We're given that the risk-free rate is also 2% during this time period. We're given that the market risk premium, which I'm abbreviating RMRF, is 6%. And that this stock has a beta of 1.2. All right. So let's just clean this up a little bit. All right. So now we need to figure out what the appropriate discount rate is going to be. So we've got some simple calculations that we need to do. One of those simple calculations is to use cap M in order to find out what the appropriate discount rate is. So the cap M discount rate, if we remember what cap M says the appropriate discount rate will be, it's the risk-free rate plus beta times RMRF. This is simply using that cap M formula to come up with the appropriate discount rate, which in this case is 9.2%. Okay, so now we can figure out our discount factor. The way I like to set up my discount factor is I say that it's equal to one plus, or sorry, um, one over one plus the discount rate K. And then I lock that cell down by hitting F4. And then I raise this 
to whatever time period is in the time column. So in this case, I'm raising it to the one. And now what's nice as setting it up as a formula like this is I can drag it all the way down. So let's clean that up a little bit. So now I've got a discount factor column, which will allow me to discount any cash flow that we have on our cash flow timeline. So let's plug in the cash flows from this cash flow timeline. And these are our dividends. So we're told or where we estimate explicitly the first five years of dividends, which is five, five, nine, seven, and 10. After that though, we're told that the dividend is gonna grow at the high growth rate. So the way I would set this up is I would say that the dividend in period six, which is 6% 6 higher than the dividend in period five, is equal to the dividend in period five multiplied by one plus the high growth rate. And I, once again, I would lock down that cell. Now you can drag that all the way down and we have explicitly what the cash flows, what the dividends will be in periods one through 10. So what this is saying is that in period 10, we expect to receive the rather large dividend of $13.38. Now, we know that we have to discount these cash flows back to today. So I create a discounted cash flow column. And what's nice about setting up this spreadsheet as an as a time, a discount factor, and a cash flow column, is I can simply multiply the discount factor by the cash flow received in that period to get the present value as of time zero of this cash flow. So what that's saying is the uh, $5 cash flow in year one, so one year from now, discounted appropriately, the present value of that is $4.58. Now on our timeline, we've plotted the explicit cash flows in periods one through five. Then we have this high growth rate period, and we've explicitly mapped those cash flows out. But we have this infinite stream of cash flows that starts at year 11, and grows at 2% forever. In order to figure out the value of that, we need to treat it as a growing perpetuity. Now remember that when we treat it as a growing perpetuity, that we pretend, when we apply that formula, we pretend that we're standing one period before the start of the um, perpetuity's cash flow. So we would be pretending we're standing right there when we're trying to value the infinite stream of dividends that starts off at period 11 and grows at 2% forever. So moving back to Excel, we need to come up with the value, this terminal value, this that is the infinite stream of, of cash flows that are growing at 2% for a year. Per year. So the terminal value here is going to be the dividend in period 11. So the dividend in period 11 is the dividend in period 10 multiplied by one plus the mature growth rate. And then we divide this by the discount rate minus the mature growth rate. And we get a terminal value of $189.58. Now the terminal value is as of period 10. Remember that the perpetuity formula discounts the ca this infinite stream of cash flows appropriately, but it discounts it to where 
we're pretending to stand, which is one period prior to the start of that infinite stream of cash flows. So going back to Excel, we need to figure out how to discount this $189.58 back to today. Now the way I can, or one way to do that would be to just add it as another cash flow as um, this period 10 cash flow. So it'd be 1338 plus whatever this value is, the $189.58. I like to make it a little bit more explicit, and this is a personal preference. And so I throw in an extra row, which is the cash flow that we'll receive at year 10 that's associated with the terminal value. I drag down the discount factor. I reference the terminal value as my cash flow in that period. And now that cash flow is discounted appropriately. The final step to calculating the value of the company um, is, is to add all the present value or the all the discounted cash flows that is the value of the company is the present value of this infinite stream of cash flows so to do that we just sum up everything in our discounted cash flows column and we find that this company is worth $135.15 so just to reiterate what we did in this this example is we first set up a timeline um, that we drew on paper and then translated into Excel. So we have the time. We also created a discount factor column, which is for ease of calculation, just to make things very explicit. We plotted the first five cash flows um, because we were given those explicitly. Then we manually grew those cash flows at the high growth rate. So we back referenced the cell above it and then multiplied it by one plus the high growth rate. And we dragged down this formula for five periods to period 10. We then calculated a terminal value based off the infinite stream of cash flows that happens um, starting at year 11 and is growing at the mature growth rate. We used the perpetuity formula in order to calculate that terminal value. We then remembered that when we apply that perpetuity formula, it's giving us the present value as of one period before the start of the cash flows. And so we put an extra row, and this is, this is the time 10, um, which is where we're pretending to be standing when we're valuing that infinite stream of cash flows. We put our terminal value here, the 189.58, and then we discount that the same way as the other cash flows. To find the value, we simply sum up all the discounted cash flows.